So some other people have, unfortunately, the Calculus BC AP test coming up. And um, because I'm bored again and I don't have anything to do, I thought I would show you a really cool proof that my physics TA showed me of why this is true. This is a very good question. Um, a lot of you have probably heard of this and wondered, like, what, what is what is this? Well, why is this true? And so this actually, I mean, I, I don't, there are probably other ways to prove it, of course, but one of the ways you can prove it is through this idea of if my... One way you can prove it is through the notion of a power series. And so a power series is, to put it simply, an infinitely long sequence that, when added together, uh, represents a function for a certain radius of convergence. Um, that's not really what we care about right now, though. We, well, I mean, we do. We care about what a power series is, but we just want to know how we can use a power series to prove this true. And so, those of you in BC who have been studying power series might know... this to be correct, right? And so that, that's great. Um, you, you, you walk through how to do that in BC, right? You take the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, plug in zero because you're centering the Taylor series at zero, do a bunch of stuff, and you end up getting this. Um, that's great and all. And so let's just write out the first few terms of this. And instead of using x, I mean, we're going to use pi i, right? Because that's what we're trying to prove, so. So first term, we're going to get pi i to the 0. Of course, that's just going to be 1, and then divide by 1. So our first term is going to be 1. Then we're going to get n is over 1, so we're going to get... Uh, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm not screwing anything up. Um, I wrote this down just so I wouldn't make any mistakes. And then it just goes pretty straightforward from here. Like, really concentrating to make sure my hand are easy. Right, and, and it'll it'll do this as long as I want it to, where the general term in this series is just, oh, hold on. right, where the general term is just this. And so, um, this i right here, right, this is being squared, and i, as hopefully you know, i squared equals negative 1, as, like, by the definition of what i is. So we can make this negative 1, and so we can actually rewrite this. Sorry, go ahead and rewrite Minus. I still squared. Uh, we can, we're cubing i, so i cubed is negative i, right? Because you can take two of those i's, change it to a negative 1, and then 1 is left. So it's actually minus i i cubed and then the fourth one we're cubing i or we're squaring i and then squaring i again so it actually turns positive i to the fourth is positive one right so then we get plus and if you if you kind of know taylor series well enough you might know where i'm going with this and then this will be plus i pi cubed times And then if I'm, I'll just write this last term and then carry on. It'll go back to be minus because we're, I mean, it's just this, right? That's why. And this series will repeat like this forever. Now, why do we care? This, this seems rather, like, what are you doing? This is not very helpful. Why it is helpful, actually, 
is we can consolidate all the odd terms. So the 1, negative pi squared over 2 factorial, positive pi over 4. We can consolidate. Let's, let's group all those together. Hopefully, this should look awfully familiar. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, this is negative. Oh, I, I wrote plus negative. I don't know why I did that. That wasn't intentional. Factorial minus pi to the sixth. Hopefully that should look like a familiar power series. And then we're adding to that. We can, so if we look at all the even terms, there's an i. I'm making sure I wrote it. Here. Yeah. There's an i in all these, on all the even terms. So we can pull that i out. And then we're left with. Great. And here's 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 sort of the, the trick, the, the sort of like realization, is that the first the first term, this is the power series for cosine, right? Uh sen cosine and then we plug in a value for it, right? Pi. So it's this expression is actually equal. Let me just cosine pi. Right? Because this goes on forever. I probably should add like dot dot dot. This, this expression goes on forever. And so that actually equals cosine pi. And then we go over here and we look. And we, have, we have i times what? That's a sine. That's a sine pi. Right? Of course, we know what the cosine of pi is. That's negative 1, right? Pointing negative 1 on the unit circle. So that's going to be a negative 1. And of course, sine of pi is pointing no direction up. So sine of pi is 0. And so, conclusion, e to the pi i does, does actually equal negative 1. So that's, that's, that's a very cool proof that my physics TA introduced me to. I'm a huge fan of it. I really like it. Um, I guess it just, it's a, it's a good exercise with power series, right? Um, that's all. Uh, yeah.